Sanyang Gyatso, the sixth Dalai Lama, wrote this poem depicting his yearning for the wings of the black-necked crane to find his successor in Li Tang. The poem is now deeply entrenched in Tibetan culture. Tibetans believe the black-necked crane is also a picture of harmony, love, and marital bliss. Centuries ago, they traded their hair with the cranes in exchange for a sacred promise to recognize that they were equals and therefore not harm each other. This is Napa Hai, part of the Tibetan plateau in Shangri-La. It is home to the black-necked cranes. The crane in particular holds a very special place in the locals' hearts. The common crane, black vulture, bar-headed goose, and more than 40 water birds are all part of this big family. Yaks, horses, and other livestock tread on the same wintering grounds, too. Although it may seem like a spectacular rendezvous of God's creations of nature, it is also one of the reasons why the black-necked crane is currently classified as vulnerable under the red list of threatened species of the World Conservation Union. One of 15 crane species in the world, the black-necked crane grows up to 140 centimeters. It has pale gray feathers and a black head endowed with a red crown patch. They mostly breed on the Tibetan plateau. The黑颈鹤现在的情况是还属于国际上的濒危鸟类。它们的种群数量现在相对来讲还是比较小。现在全世界 黑警鹤大约有八千多只，嗯，所以他们的这个生存状况呢还是比较濒危的。It is already a hard life for the birds under such extreme weather conditions, and this is made worse with the introduction of human activities. With the opening up of China in the late 1990s, there's been an influx of industrialization and efforts to boost the economy. One of which became the most successful is tourism. Right now, this area is uh, very popular during the summer for tourists to come here. There's been an increase of interest in Tibetan Buddhism in recent years, which has resulted in a boost of tourism in this area. Tourism has inevitably become an important sector in China's economy. Because of this, land areas have been converted for entertainment activities, like shopping and skiing. With the influx of foreigners into the sacred piece of local land, poaching became a problem. The bones of black-necked cranes are also known to cure illnesses. 
And nowadays here, uh, the Tibetan uh, medicine is not so uh, commercialized, if, uh, but uh, it's a um, process. But if uh, the Tibetan medicine is so too com commercialized, then it would uh, cause a kind of threat to the black cranes as well. In the past, when we started the project in the late 80s, uh, occasionally in the eastern part of the wintering ground, let's say in Guizhou, in eastern part of Yunnan province, there were still people hunting them. Fortunately, illegal poaching has been curbed a great deal when strict laws were passed to protect the cranes. However, in recent years, vast areas of land around the plateau have been transformed into farming lands and grazing pastures. There is always a competition between the pasture, the grazing ground, uh, and with the, with the, with the birds uh, that are wintering here. Because in order to make the land more fertilized for the next season, they were burning the grass all the way up to the edge of the, uh, the, the water, the, the, the marshes. So those type of activities in a, in a major wintering ground for the birds uh, certainly is very disruptive. The economic interests of the locals and the survival of the cranes have always been at a conflict. All this despite the love and care the locals have for the cranes. Uh, like uh, here, people are raising a lot of pigs, and uh, they, they let uh, the pigs uh, roaming around the wetland, and then the pigs, uh, they uproot the grasses. So that, uh, that is definitely a kind of uh, a sign of uh, grass degradation, and, uh, and also cause the uh, threat to black and crane. It's the same at a burning and the grass, uh, grassland. They are not, no, the action is threatening the black and cranes. Uh, People want to preserve the black neck cranes, but they don't know how. The China Exploration and Research Society, also known as CERS, was founded by Mr. Wong Hao Man in 1986. Over the past 22 years, CERS has been spearheading numerous projects aimed at conserving culture, tradition, and animals in remote parts of China including the black-necked crane. It is a challenge for CERS to take on the 21st century with its struggles to find a balance between conservation and development. Well, I won't say it is only our efforts. I think overall, China's uh, environmental awareness, in particular with wildlife, has changed a lot over the last 10 years. Uh, of course, uh, CERS has put in our, our part of the efforts, especially through education in specific places where the cranes are spending their winter or summer ground. To conserve the nature or culture of the community, I think the education should be focused on the community itself. We actually start working with the schools, dealing with children first, so that the school kids get the message that the cranes are to be protected, that they are very auspicious, it's unlucky to, to, uh, for, for anyone that will kill them. So it's not always just talking about the science. When you're talking about you know, dealing with very local, uh, uh, perhaps uh, lowly educated people, but uh, in principle, this, the school kids bring those message home for us. So eventually, I think that within a fairly short time, uh, everybody knew that uh, it is illegal to harm these birds. We uh, uh, distrib uh, distribute uh, the uh, the card with the, the pictures of uh, the uh, endangered animals to the local uh, uh, schools. 
as well we provide the other materials to the you know, teachers then the teachers can uh, transfer the information to the local students there has certainly been a very long tradition of, uh, of uh, worship on the crane among some of the Tibetans they are considered as a, a very loyal stable keeper of King Gassar, the legendary, very heroic king of Tibet. So I think as far as that part is concerned, in a good part of Tibet, uh, the, the, the cranes, uh, the black knight cranes called Chong Chong uh, by Tibetans is, is very much revered anyway. In terms of the birds of the plateau, uh, perhaps the cranes should hold the most important part already in, in their hearts. 尤其是他们见到了有些受伤的鹤现在他已经发展多了 CERS has achieved the commendable success of increasing the crane's population from approximately 80 to more than 300. However, there's still a long road ahead to restore and stabilize the survival of these magnificent birds. The future of the black-necked crane hangs in the fragile balance as China witnesses a complex power play between the resilience of religion, conservationist efforts, and the lure of modernity.